And the people who, who, who criticize the translations are usually very well educated, which isn't a yeah, criticism, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they can read the heart of translations easier. Where you've got this brand new believer, yeah. they don't understand hither and thither and these yeah. and thous. So, um, one of the uh, scripture translations that you like to read out of is the Passion Bible. You know, causes some um, concern for some, and mm-hmm. and um, I, I'm aware that over our time together, you know, it, it, you used to read out of the Message pretty regularly. I know you switched translations at some point because you used to be new, more of a New American Standard guy, and then yeah. you went to the New King James. Yeah. I, I think because you just had were so familiar with the New American Standard yeah. that you were wanting to like read it afresh. And then, uh, you know, uh, so you, you've you been reading lots of different translations for a long oh, time. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I like different translations. I only teach out of, new, or, or my books, I only teach uh, or write out of New American Standard or the New King James. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I, they're more word-for-word I just, translations? I'm, or? I'm more familiar with them. Okay, yeah. 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 I mean, I... I I'm not a Hebrew or Greek. Yeah. Greek. I have to believe whoever it is. Let's you know? be clear. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We're, we're beholden to <laughs> super smart Christians yeah, I, who have done this for us. Exactly. So I, 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 I honor the scholarship that has gone into uh, the New King James, the New American Standard I love. Yeah. And often I, when I'm quoting Scripture, I will quote out of my years in the New American Standard. Yeah. So anyway, when I teach, I teach generally out of those. But for inspiration, oftentimes I will read, I love the Passion Translation. Yeah. There are so many things. Every time he he deviates from what would be a traditional approach to a verse, yeah. he explains it so par- powerfully that, that even if you don't agree with him, you at least understand where he's coming mm-hmm. from, which mm-hmm. I really enjoy that part of the process. Yeah. Um, but I don't use it as a... As um, as a proof text for something, yeah. but yes. I, but I will. Uh, I don't apologize for it. I, I love to use it, yeah. but I, I use it for really for passion, for inspiration. <laughs> he, it basically says what he's trying to do. And every Bible has an agenda, and he's been super clear with his. Is like I want you to experience exactly, the exactly. passion God has for you. That's it, and that He's awakening in you. And I've purposely kind of chosen literary language that can do that yeah. powerfully. Yeah, um, the, the message d- did that. In, oh, like, in totally. I mean, some of, the, some of the, the things that he said were, they were so different <laughs> than what I read here, but they were so profound yeah. that it, it was almost like his translation, if you will, yeah. was a commentary in a sense. It explained things that just made it clear. Absolutely. Yeah, and Both I, Eugene Peterson and yeah. Passion, I, I treat them like commentaries or read them devotionally because they exactly. do unlock like, whoa, exactly. I've never quite seen that. Yeah. And the Phillips translation is another one. I used yeah. to love the Phillips, J.B. Phillips. Yeah, absolutely. For the same reason. Yeah. I, I grew up with that one. That was the only one, you know, Yeah, there were very few. The we've always had these single-person <laughs> translations. It's just so funny that people just get wigged out about them at, at yeah, some point. Yeah. At the church at various times gets so frustrated and yeah. concerned about various uh, translations. But, hey, go look at your church history. There's been lots of trans uh, translations yeah, over yeah, yeah. time. All to meet the needs of the community. Uh, you know, sometimes they had new translations because they, you know, the Church of England was splitting from the, uh, you know, the rest <laughs> of the church needed a translation. Uh, other times it was from the Latin, and then it was from the Greek and the Hebrew. Right, so, right. Um, you know, the King New King James that some people just are fanatical about was actually a response to a need, and yeah. a, a had its critics in its day at the very beginning. Like I, you know, one of the scholars that was a popular at the time said, "I demand that it should be burnt, and I won't use it." So that was the critique of the New King James. So. There, we kind of live in this odd fantasy, like there's just one or two yeah. really great yeah. translations, and we've been using a lot of different ones for a long time. Yeah, you know. I like them. Yeah. I like them. I we had the, them. the Living Translation, beautifully yeah. powerful. Again, it was a paraphrase. The, it wasn't a translation. The original Living was a paraphrase. Right. It, Kenneth Taylor took the English and just made it more, and kind of updated it, as I understand it. Yeah. And then, uh, but then the Living Bible was actually translated more from the from the Greek and the Hebrew at some point. And that's the difference between the paraphrase and the translation. But again, you in the Jesus movement, you saw how powerful the Living Bible was for getting people totally. into their word. Totally. And um, uh, and he, people were very critical of that, uh, critical of him yeah. in that day. And it's just like this critical spirit, it, it ain't pretty, it ain't helpful. And it's been around for yeah. forever. And when we join it, we're not helping anybody. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just... and, the, and the people who, who, who criticize the translations are usually very well educated, which isn't a yeah, criticism, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but they can read the heart of translations easier. Where you've got this brand new believer, yeah. they don't understand hither and thither and these yeah. and thous, which was 
what you had an option for in my day. It was yeah. good news for modern man or, yeah. or or King James, you know, until the New American Standard came along. And it was in the 70s. And so yeah. you just had, you had some rough yeah. choices, you know. Yeah. And you get these brand new believers, they don't understand this stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I'll never forget, um, there's this New Century translation that they actually uh, marketed as a children's version as well because it's written as at, at a third grade reading level. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember taking my son Eric and, uh, into the Christian bookstore uh, one day. We walked in and I wanted to find this because I had read about it. I found this translation in a children's version. I opened to Galatians 2 verse 20. It's no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me. So mm-hmm. I took this verse. I said, Eric, read that. So I, I forget, his, he's probably seven, eight years old. So he reads this verse, and his eyes went wide, and he looked up at me and he said, Dad, I understand that, wow. which wow. just told me everything I've had him read, he didn't understand. Wow. And now it was written at a third grade reading level that, that he could connect with. Well, that's what we want, is we want yeah. people to join in the, Absolutely. you know, I can read harder things now than I could, yeah. you know, when I first when I first surrendered to Christ. But but, uh, but I, I don't want what I'm capable of doing to be my judgment against somebody else. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think for us as well, we preach and teach generally, you know, out of the New American Standard, the ESV, the New King James. Mm-hmm. And when I'm teaching preaching classes, that's what I'm doing. But I'm like, hey, if you want to read the message, uh, you know, you want to uh, look at the passion to understand another brother in Christ's take on that, then— that might be super helpful for yeah, you to like look yeah, at. Yeah. And we all translations, if you you know are uh, on this continuum, maybe either word for word or thought for thought, yeah. and some are more successful than others. And even within translations, some verse translations are more successful than others. Yeah. Uh, so it's it it again, if we can find the heart of a real value for each other and artistry and beauty and transformation, yeah. <laughs> and less of the critical spirit and yeah. anxiety. Like that anxiety, like I said, it's been around for at least, you know, since uh, the 1400s or something, 1500s, this anxiety around translations. Now, it's the living word of God, absolutely, but we don't even have the original autographs of it. We have copies of copies of copies. And the Holy Spirit's been brooding over those to give them to the church. And they're brooding over Christians who are translating them uh, in, in light of new archaeological discoveries as well. And so we're just on this journey of the Lord yeah. giving us the scripture he wants to create the sort of church that he wants. And um, yeah. I think he's a genius the way he's done it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, You know, the thing I have greater problem with is that this book is being taught by people who aren't in love. Mm-hmm. They may be scholars, but they don't have the relationship to really add the nuance that, that this thing needs. Yeah. This is a living book. It's not just uh, it's not just a textbook. This is I, I, I tell our students as you know I said this is Jesus in print. Mm-hmm. He is the Word of God mm-hmm. and uh, and we don't tell me you love Jesus and you don't love the Word. Wow. Don't tell me you love Jesus. You don't love the Scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. You know our 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 approaches. You know I I liken this to a recipe. Um, not everything in a given recipe for a meal, Mm -hmm. not everything in the recipe tastes good. Mm -hmm. Some things actually taste horrible. Baking soda. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) But you put it in. Unsalted butter, but go ahead. (laughs) Exactly, (laughs) yeah. I'm I'm with you. I can go on. I'm I'm with you, I know you could. (laughs) But in the whole whole meal, it's, it adds a piece that is brilliant. Mm-hmm. So I look at judges and I look at the genealogies and I look at all the unique parts of this word. I need all of them. I need every single part because together it creates the perfect meal, the perf- perfect recipe that represents him well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to, to your point, Jesus, is, one of his main arguments with the Pharisees was like, you, you guys understand the Old Testament, but you don't understand the Old Testament. <laughs> Yeah, and so so there's that yeah. that we have to like soberly look at that ability to master material and not be mastered by the material, or you yeah, know, by the master. Yeah, and and one of his points was, if you really knew this, you would have recognized me. Yeah, and you didn't. Yeah, absolutely. because this led to me, you know, and, and that was the lesson. Yeah, absolutely. So when I, <clears throat> do you think it translates? Like, so when I'm steeped in the Word and my relationship with the Lord, I can actually look at another believer and go. I don't love exactly how he's interpreting that scripture or translating it, but I see 
the love of Christ in him. I see the, the yeah. trust of the Father in him, yeah. her. And so I can super, like, like, I don't agree with the interpretation. I love the individual. Exactly. That, that happens all the time.